Technology is always changing and evolving, and because of that, sometimes we can find it somewhat intimidating. Well, to help with that, we're going to provide this video series and show you some tips and tricks that you can use and also ways that you can take advantage of this great technology and these great products that are installed within your home. Let's jump in and take a look at some of the devices that we commonly find installed in smart homes. The first is the Ruckus ICX7150. The 7150 is a switch which interconnects all of our devices together. Your access point will be connected to it and your internet service provider connection should be attached to it as well. The 7150 has a pretty important role within a smart home. One of the most important is to provide PoE or power over ethernet. What we mean by that is the blue ethernet cable that's running from the 7150 to the R510 mounted behind it is providing power to that R510 access point. The 7150 provides power and the R510 draws power from it. There's no need with the R510 to have an external power cord connected to the wall. Looking at the front of the ICX 7150, we need to understand which ports will provide power because not all of the 16 copper ethernet ports will. The 12 ports in the middle, labeled 1 through 12, are your PoE ports. These will power PoE capable devices. The two ports on the left, one is a console port, one is a management port, most likely not used within your home. There's four ports to the right of the device, two of which are copper. C1 and C2, these are uplink ports, and in your home, they're most likely not in use. And finally, ports labeled X1 and X2 are just blank SFP ports that are most likely not used as well. Let's demonstrate the PoE functionality. We're going to take a standard Ethernet cable and plug it into one of the PoE ports on the front of the 7150. Now as we look at the underside of the R510, we see that there's two copper Ethernet ports installed here as well, one of which is labeled PoE. We're going to plug the other end of the cable into the PoE port and once we have it plugged in, after a few seconds, we'll see some lights light up on the back of the device, and this shows us that the access point is now powered. Now that we've connected the 7150 to the R510 and powered our access point, we can also note that we have a green LED lit in the port with the ethernet cable connected to it on the 7150. This is a link light, and it shows that it is now established link between the R510 and the 7150. If you ever need support on your Ruckus R510 access point, you're gonna need to obtain the serial number and MAC address on the unit. It's located on the bottom of the device. However, if your device is attached to the wall, there's a little trick I'm gonna show you in terms of releasing it and removing it. On the front panel of the access point, there's a small pinhole that we use to release the access point from its wall-mounted location. There's a key provided with the original packaging material that you can use to release the device. As you can see, when the key is inserted into the pinhole, it releases the pin that locks the device into place in the wall-mounted location. As we demonstrate, if you no longer have the key, I'd recommend trying to find something of similar material as the locking mechanism is pretty durable. If for any reason we ever need to reset our access point back to factory default, Next to the PoE port is a reset button. We're gonna use the key to reset the device. Now when you insert the key into the reset button and hold, you wanna hold it until the power LED turns red. At that point, we need to release it. If we hold that button longer than 30 seconds, you run the risk of not being able to recover the access point. We don't recommend resetting your access point unless you're actively working with Ruckus support and they recommend you do so. This is just to give you a visual representation of how to perform the reset. Let's go over the LEDs on the R510 access point real quick. The power light should always be green or sometimes amber. If it's red, then the access point is either booting or there's an issue. If you have more than one access point installed in your home, then the control light will always be green. The 2.4G and 5G LEDs, they will always be amber or green. When they're green, it means that your wireless network is up and operating with clients connected to it. And if they're amber, it means that the network is up, but there are no clients connected to it at this time. 
Thanks for watching. That's it for this video. Keep an eye on our channel. There's plenty of other content that you should find useful. And finally, congratulations on your new home.